Let's get into it. What was the approach to building out the Shadowlands Afterlife shorts? Disparate in terms of their tone, but unified in terms of their exploration of Shadowlands and its greater themes to make sure they each stood out in their own way. And see if the news are the following. And this is something that I always fucking love. We realized early on that Shadowlands was introducing many deep concepts that would provide our players with nuanced themes to ponder and oh my god, did it. As we began planning the Afterlife series, we recognized an opportunity to introduce those concepts through relatable characters, including many rooted in Azeroth's history. Now, I do want to say to anyone that, that, you know, a lot of people are sort of like, um, listing names of people that they want to see within the, within the, Shadowl or within the Shadowlands and people that may have died. Um, we already know that that is most likely not going to happen. There's a lot of characters that, or personalities that we would love to see make a comeback within the Shadowlands. The Blizzard have already confirmed will not be there, or at least they're not going to dive into it. But I do think that the characters that they've chosen, bar maybe Draka. Draka is a pretty weird character that they've chosen to make. Oh, and by the way, we found Mankirk's wife. This is not in this interview. But I just wanted to point out because a lot of you are actually pointing that out. Finally, we have her. This is the kind of storytelling that Blizzard excels at. They introduced the character in vanilla and they're finally ending that storyline. Do you guys see how Blizzard tells their stories? That's how that works. So never say that Blizzard doesn't do a good job of telling the story. Blizzard doesn't do a good job of telling the story in a single expansion, but fuck me. They will eventually end the story. No, we, we genuinely actually find Mankirk's wife in the Shadowlands. So that's a little bit of a spoiler for all of you. Uh, but yeah, that, that is genuinely actually happening. Uh, it's a little bit of a throwback to, you know, obviously what everyone spent hours looking for in, in Manila. So yeah, uh, very cool, I think. Um, so yeah, uh, just wanted to say, I, I think with the exception of Draka, Draka is a bit of a strange character i think uh being introduced because i think there may have been better characters to introduce instead of draka i'm not saying draka is a bad character i just don't know if, if draka was the best character that they could have used there personally i think someone like duraton could have been a, a a bigger draw it could have been someone that i would i would um i would probably have cared for more but vash lady vash being there definitely does uh, add a lot more power to it, of course. Um, but yeah, I, I still think, even though I don't necessarily agree with the Draka edition, I still think it's it's brilliant the way in which they chose these characters and the characters that they wanted to bring back. Opening with the iconic death of Uther, the Lightbringer, Bastion contrasted our, our most bright, idyllic afterlife with the hungering darkness of them all. Through Draka, Draka's ceaseless struggle, we learned that the armies of Maldraxxus have been plunged into strife and division. We followed the wild god Ursoc's spirit into Ardenweald and told a story of hard choices and painful sacrifice. And through the silky venom of Sire Denathrius in Revendreth, we showed how greed and avarice could twist a once noble society into a realm of selfishness and greed. But... I mean, all right. While each cinematic stands on its own, they build upon one another to frame the looming threats that players will face when they enter the Shadowlands. How much do the animated shorts explain some of the mechanisms at work in Shadowlands' narrative? Will there be any hints, big or small, that fans who watch the shorts will be able to pick up on or see the development of in-game? Now, as you guys know, how many times, how many hours have we spent unraveling is probably the best word, trying to figure out what all of these shorts mean, where they may fit in. I think the animated shorts this time around is even better than uh, the, the Warbringer series. And the Warbringer series was amazing. 
But I think these are truly just Blizzard blossoming into their own with these stories and how they tell the story through these animated shorts. We know that no detail, no matter how small or seemingly incidental, escapes the watchful eye of our players. That's us, by the way. We are the watchful eyes of their players. From concept to script to storyboards to animatics, all the way to final sound and images, every word and every frame is lovingly crafted in painstaking detail. Nothing is there by accident. Now, he is talking about the animated shorts, but I believe it was Alex of Frigiabio, however the fuck you say his name, who said pretty much the same thing about their general um, their gen general cinematics, right? Their general cinematics is exactly the same. Everything in their cinematics is chosen to be there. They, they, they're very careful, and I think it's thanks to players like us. How many of you contact me almost on a daily basis on Discord or on Twitter saying, hey, dude, did you see this? Did you see this? Sending me screenshots of, the, of different cinematics with different things in them. So it's us that, that have pretty much force them to do constantly better with these cinematics. So I think that's that's sort of cool. Players have already picked up on a number of elements that hint at larger storylines or concepts. When we depicted Uther's soul being shattered by Frostmourne, we wondered if the detail might be too subtle. But in fact, the community spotted that immediately and began speculating why, what that might mean for Uther and the other characters. When we showed Draka infiltrating a Burning Legion stronghold, viewers quickly picked up on a reference to an earlier cinematic and realized the implication that the Necrolords not only defend against invasions, but travel beyond the Shadowlands to neutralize potential threats. There are other details in the Afterlife series that will take on greater meaning. This is the one thing that I fucking loathe, that we have to wait before we can see what everything means. But anyways, Shadowlands feels very political, in a way, um, in the way it explores resource scarcity and the shorts go to great lengths to show that the regions have the capacity for good and evil. Is there a side in the Shadowlands fight that you anticipate fans will identify as the good and bad? Or do you feel like as we explore what Afterlives has established, that will be impossible to call? Interesting question. Steve Denuser says, we intended for the themes introduced in Shadowlands and in the Afterlife series to inspire conversation and debate, and I think we can all agree they fucking nailed it. It has inspired countless hours of debate and of conversation around what we think is actually going to go on here. It's not as simple as saying something is right or wrong, good or evil. Have I not been saying this for the longest fucking time. Thank you, Steve Denuser. The ecosystem of death functioned seemingly without incident for countless eons before the Arbiter ceased functioning and the Anima drought created a scarcity of resources. Yet we see how swiftly the functions and norms within each of these realms began to break down. Such a rapid unraveling should raise the question of how healthy that system was to begin with. <clears throat> Should I repeat that? Or did everyone uh, catch it? You get, just tell me. If you, if you need me to repeat this, if you need me to explain this, uh, I'd be happy to. But I just want to make sure. Alright, so some of you want me to, to repeat this. Alright. <clears throat> The ecosystem of death functioned seemingly without incident for countless eons before the Arbiter ceased functioning and the Anima Drought created a scarcity of resources. Yet, we see how swiftly the functions and norms within each of these realms began to break down. Such a rapid unraveling should raise the question of how healthy that system was to begin with. This is an important part. The Shadowlands is not natural. The way the Shadowlands is set up is not natural. And this is effectively what he is saying. I've been saying this 
for the longest fucking time and people have been arguing with me for the longest fucking time saying oh my god what are you talking about dude the shadowlands is where we go when we die the shadowlands is where we go when we die and i'm like it's not normal and i just want to say it's not about me calling this right because i'm not alone in this there's been many of you that have sort of planted that idea in my mind and, and helped me think of this so i'm not taking like credit for this saying oh my god i'm right i'm right i'm right that's not the point here. I don't make videos to be right. Yeah. I, I genuinely just make videos because it's fun stories. But in this instance, that's not just a story, right? This is, if you looked at the Shadowlands and specifically if you look at the Kyrians, no one can look at what the Kyrians are doing to mortal souls and tell me that is fucking normal. You can't. It is insane to think. But anyways, visually, we have deliberately played with perceptions and assumptions. The gleaming spires of Bastion hide a darkness growing within the ranks of the Kyrian. In contrast, the overcast skies and looming stone towers of Ravendreth exude a gothic horror vibe. Yet we learn that the Venthyr exists to carry out a noble calling of redemption and rehabilitation. In the Shadowlands, Nothing is exactly what it appears to be at first glance. You must always look deeper. Do you guys get why I'm so excited for the Shadowlands? Does it even make sense to people why I'm so fucking excited for this expansion? I mean, the things that Blizzard is doing here, the, 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 the lessons that Blizzard have learned, and that they're applying to the storytelling of Shadowlands is just, oh my god, this is going to be too fucking good, bro. As is often the way uh, of Blizzard's best cinematics and shorts, Afterlives leaves us with a lot more questions than answers. And fuck me, is that true? How many of these threads are explored and resolved in Shadowlands? And how much can we expect to continue through the larger story of World of Warcraft? I think this is a fucking great question. While we intend this expansion to tell a focused story with a satisfying conclusion, I hope it ends with us being loyalists forever and being able to kill all the traitors. That, that would be a satisfying conclusion. It also opens up countless possibilities for the Warcraft universe. One of the most exciting aspects of bringing Shadowlands to life, pardon the pun, is the opportunity to not only explore established lore, but to build upon it and take it into tantalizing new directions. And quite frankly, I couldn't agree more. If you look at what happens in the Shadowlands, if you look at some of the older lore, uh, specifically the Arthur stuff, and how much more clarity we have around Arthur's, but then you look at what we're learning now within the Shadowlands. We're learning about Eternal Ones. We've just very recently learned that almost every single one of the cosmological forces has its own pantheon. We're learning more about the Void and the Light and that the Void and the Light at some point attacked the Shadowlands. For what purpose? For what reason? There's so many open stories now and more will undoubtedly be introduced to us that from year on forward, World of Warcraft could really go anywhere. Uh, on Twitch, not uh, too long ago. Oh, by the way, just very quickly for those of you that didn't know, I, I have to brag about this because I'm so fucking excited about it. Uh, we just made partner on Twitch, FYI. So yeah, just wanted to point that out. Uh, I didn't think I would get it. I, I genuinely didn't think it would fucking happen. Not the first time you apply uh, for partnership, but it was my first application. And uh, they sent me an email saying, hey, congratulations, you just made partner. So yeah, uh, that that's fucking great. Anyways, um... On Twitch, I kind of went through my headcanon theory of what I think the next expansions for World of Warcraft will be, right? And I think the next expansion, the very next expansion, will take us back to Azeroth, most likely to deal with initial problems with Azara. After that, I believe... We will, well, actually, the next expansion either takes us back to Azeroth to deal with Ajara, or it takes us to Koresh. I believe that we will be going to Koresh. Koresh, I believe, is where we will learn a lot more about the Light and the Void. I don't believe 
that a, an expansion about the light would happen without the void being included or about the void without the light being included. I believe whenever we go after any of these two forces, the other one will not be far behind. They seem to be consistently at war with one another. Koresh is the homeworld of the Ethereals, right? Koresh is their destroyed homeworld, which I still believe to this, to this day still exists. I believe that it was almost destroyed, but not completely. So I believe that we will be going to Koresh at some point to figure out what is going on there. Not only that, but I think that the Shadowlands itself offers far more than just these realms that we've seen. I think the Shadowlands is far more than just these realms that we've seen. In fact, and this is a video that I will be making at some point, I did this last Sunday where I discussed this with you guys, but I believe that Nihilotha is just another name. It's the name that the Void have for the Maw. I believe that the Maw is the original city of the dead. It's where souls went once they died. I believe that that is the city that everyone is warring over. Because whoever controlled that city before Arabos was built would have controlled the flow of souls. I believe that Nihilotha is the Maw. The Maw is the city of the damned. So, yeah, that's just my opinion on it. But I do think that our next expansions will take us to the cosmological forces. And not only that, just by the way, no, uh, Undercity, no, we didn't go to Nihilotha. We went to a vision of Nihilotha, not Nihilotha itself. It was the vision. It was the vision that Nazoth wanted to show us. I mean, the actual patch is called Visions of Nazoth. We we only saw what he wanted to what he wanted to show us. We didn't see all of it. Um, but I believe that we're gonna go on a cosmic a, a cosmic adventure. And the reason I believe this, which we've also discussed, and yes, I realized. Um, I should save this as my desktop background, but I'm not gonna, because I like searching for it. What I also believe, can you not go bigger? Never mind then. Okay, so we already know this is gonna be fucking nuts. There we go. All right, so we already know that this is a zoomed in version of the cosmological forces, right? This is not the be all and end all of the cosmology map. Not at all. This is only a zoomed-in version based on the limitations of what the Titans can see. The Titans cannot see beyond these lines. Outside of these lines lie the first ones, lie the Clockmaker. There may be even greater forces that lie outside of this. Fuck the shells, however. If you ask me what these things mean, I don't know. I don't care. It's shells. It means that the fish people are coming. Um, as for the cosmological map, there are bigger things that lie outside of this that we are yet to see all of these things i believe exist beyond the shadowlands i believe that the, i don't think that the shadowlands is that far removed from the forces of the void from the twisting nether as blizzard wants us to believe but anyways that's neither here nor there i'm not going to go into those theories just now because that's going to take fucking forever and hours and hours and hours that i don't have time for but Actually, I do have time for it. My voice just wouldn't like me for that. Um, the Chronicles book provided a window. Surprise, surprise. We're talking about the cosmology map. I have one right here. <laughs> the, the Chronicles book provided a window in the Warcraft cosmology from the point of view of the Titans and their progeny. In Shadowlands, we get to delve into those my mysteries from a different perspective. And we find out that there's far more to the nature of reality and the planes of existence than anyone had realized. Many of the concepts introduced in the Afterlife series and in the stories revealed in this expansion will tee up some very intriguing possibilities that will be explored in future content. After hearing this, guys, can I just ask how many of you are excited for the future of World of Warcraft? fight the light and void what comes next we take control of our physical human bodies and fight real life issues uh, i don't know quite honestly what what comes next Sega. all right so many of you are exactly where i am 
right? Very fucking excited. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that you guys are as excited as I am. For example, so Steve the Newser gives us an example here. From the dark reaches of the moor to the ancient halls of Oribos, you'll hear a mention of powerful beings referred to as the first ones. As the story of Shadowlands unfolds, we'll meet allies helping to explore the mysteries of their existence, as well as adversaries determined to plunder their secrets. All right, so here's another really interesting thing that I genuinely, when I when I first read this just before the stream, uh, actually, I think I first read this last night or it might have been this morning. But anyways, whenever I first read this, um, something was sort of very much standing out. We'll meet allies helping to explore the mysteries of their existence, as well as adversaries determined to plunder their secrets. Here's a question for you guys. What if the first ones no longer live? What if the first ones was an ancient race that created the universe? But that war or whatever killed them off. So effectively we're thinking about we're almost going back to the stories of Mass Effect, where you get a lot, um, a lot of these ancient races that sort of just disappeared thanks to the Reapers. Um, so we're, we're sort of going, uh, sort of heading in that direction, if you will. So they left the machine running. Yes, and so they effectively set up all of these things before a great war broke out. Maybe the Void Lords attacked, and the Void Lords killed all of them. But now this entire system still exists right uh, still in its own right exist and they want to plunder their secrets we we want to learn the mysteries of their existence do they still exist what are we going to find are we going to finally go to first world lands right um to their worlds to where they once existed personally i think this would be a far greater story i just feel like once you start introducing someone like first ones this could take the story in, 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 a, in a sort of extreme fantasy version of the story that may not be as easily sellable, or it could very quickly become a very flaky story, right? Uh, so like how God left. Yes, Amanda. So they're pretty much just gone. And maybe we're going to learn throughout the, the story of Warcraft where they went or why they went, you know? These are things that hopefully we'll figure out as we go. Because right now we don't know where the first ones are. We think that Elune might be a first one, but do we really know if she is a first one? Fuck no. We know nothing, right? This is just something that I thought would be very interesting. And then finally, we have to ask. You can't just tease Arthas in a Shadowlands narrative and then never see him again in the expansion, right? That would be evil, Steve Newser. At the conclusion of the first act of Shadowlands arc, there is a scene in which several of our main characters discuss the legacy of of Arthas Menethil. They note that his scepter hangs, his spectre hangs over all of them like a shroud, an apt metaphor for an expansion focused on death. The story of Arthas from Warcraft 3 to its conclusion at the end of Wrath of the Lich King is one of the most iconic tales in our canon. We do not invoke his name lightly. I love the fact that they're giving him so much respect. At the same time, Shadowlands allows us to explore the origins of the darkness that consumed the heart of the young prince. In the process, we just might learn more about him and the others whose lives were forever impacted by the choices Arthas made. Is Steve the Newser telling us we're never going to meet Arthas here? We're just going to learn more about him? That would be fucking silly, right? That would be silly. How many of you think that's what he's saying like, what do you think he's actually saying here is he saying that uh we'll just learn more about him because i genuinely can't see that happen he he has to feature right or am i just fucking wrong